right, so our first story that we're going to be covering today is on Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin appointing Brian Brooks uh, to oversee uh, the banking system in some degree. So let's talk about what this means. Uh, the U.S. Treasury Secretary is Steve Mnuchin, uh, and he is a longtime cryptocurrency skeptic, as we've covered multiple times on this channel. Uh, you may <laughs> you may remember him, uh, us covering him, describing Bitcoin as, you know, that old Swiss secret number bank account, right? Uh, just last month when we reported on his appearance in front of the U.S. Senate. Now, interestingly enough, though, Mnuchin, it just was announced today that Mnuchin has now appointed an executive from the world of crypto uh, to be one of the country's top banking uh, regulators. Uh, it's one of the top positions of regulatory authority in the country. Uh, and that's Brian Brooks. Uh, and he has served as Coinbase's uh, chief legal officer uh, since mid-2018. And he has just been tapped for the next chief operating officer and first deputy comptroller of the office of the comptroller of the currency, the OCC. Now, that's a mouthful. And you can be forgiven if you've never heard of the OCC. This is a lesser known financial regulatory body. It was established all the way back in 1863, and it is the primary overseer of banks and federal savings associations in the United States. Uh, it issues rules. It issues regulations. Here's the announcement from the office of the comptroller of the currency. Uh, it issues rules and regulations that govern banks. Uh, it plays a supervisory role to banks, and it ensures that they, they do not engage in risky activities, except, of course, for destabilizing our entire economy with the mass printing of money. Now, the appointment of Brooks to oversee the nation's banking system uh, is pretty surprising, honestly, given the Treasury Secretary's stern anti-crypto stance. And again, the comments that he made just last year, insisting that the United States does not need to adopt a digital greenback. And what's interesting about that is that Brooks, on the other hand, is an outspoken advocate of making the United States a leader in digital currencies. He's known for proposing the role that the United States should play in leading the world in digitizing dollars is, is, is essential. Back in uh, November of 2019, Brooks wrote this piece uh, published in Fortune magazine, and it's titled A Digital Dollar for a Strong United States Financial System. And in this op-ed piece, he describes a blockchain-powered United States dollar as absolutely inevitable and how it is an issue that will enjoy bipartisan support, uh, saying in part that the time has essentially come for a tokenized dollar, and it's not just individuals who are enthusiastic about it who are in the cryptocurrency space. We're not the only ones who think so. Uh, he points out that even senior U.S. officials are floating the idea and are entertaining the idea of creating dollars on a blockchain. Um, with this kind of weight, this kind of momentum behind the support, the idea is inevitable. Now, again, one might think that this is a very positive thing, right? We have somebody moving from Coinbase to the Office of the Comptroll of the Currency. He's very pro-cryptocurrency. Uh, but the question we have to ask uh, is, if the United States moves to a digital blockchain system, it's certainly not going to be decentralized, right? So the question we have to ask is, who gets to control, who gets to control the blockchain, right? Now, Mnuchin, uh, writing in the OCC's official announcement of Brooks' appointment, described the move as necessary to ensure the stability of our financial system and its ability to foster greater economic growth for the benefit of all Americans, right? Now, why such the sudden shift? Why the sudden shift from, we don't need to digitize the dollar uh, and crypto, Bitcoin is a Swiss number bank account. We'll never do anything with that. Well, certainly his stance on Bitcoin hasn't changed. So why would they be pushing uh, why would they be appointing somebody who is, we would think, Bitcoin friendly to the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency? Now, Brian Brooks is no dummy. He's a Harvard graduate. He got his law degree from the University of Chicago. He's described as a strong leader with extensive experience in the financial services sector. He comes from the world of finance. And he's going to assume this new role April 1st, 2020. And besides serving as the chief legal officer for the United States' largest crypto exchange, he has also been the executive VP over at Fannie Mae, as well as the general counsel and corporate secretary over the years for the same institution. Again, this guy does not come from the world of cryptocurrency. He comes from the world of finance, right? Now, the former comptroller, Joseph Odding, he was nominated by President Trump back in 2017. Uh, now, he gave a glowing review of Brooks being appointed to this position, saying that he was bringing an extensive career of legal banking and financial innovation uh, innovation expertise to the agency. Uh, you know, saying that he's a visionary, he's a thinker with a passion for service and a deep understanding of how the industry works, of how the financial industry works. Now, again, 
Uh, I would love to believe that this is a, a a good thing. And indeed, Brooks is widely considered to be a visionary, not only advocating for the digitization of the United States dollar, but also suggesting that its private corporations are better suited to build such a system and not government institutions. Well, that's just practical sense. Free market economies build better things than government bureaucrats. So from what we seem to understand here, Brooks has envisioned a system in which the public sector still sets the monetary policy, but the actual technology infrastructure would be built and managed by the private space. And that would be absolutely fantastic to see. That's the best case scenario, right? But I just have to lay out my reservations about this, right? Is that even if the intentions of Mr. Brooks are good, uh, this is an individual that comes from the world of finance. And again, sometimes it's difficult to get those ideas and thoughts of finance out uh, and we have to understand. So let's let's be frank about a few things here. The first thing is that CBDCs are going to happen. He, I completely agree uh, with Brian when he says that it is absolutely inevitable that we tokenize the dollar, that we move to a digital dollar system. Right? We've been talking about the reality of CBDCs for a long time on this channel. It is inevitable, and we have to understand that this is what centralized governments want. It removes all of the barriers. It has the potential to remove barriers between government control of the monetary system. Currently, as bad as our system is, there still stands private banks and the free market to a large degree that acts as a buffer between the government, the central bank, and the economy. But with a CBDC running on a blockchain, Every tri so not only will they have a better infrastructure for a command and control, top-down control of the economy, which is, of course, what every centralized bureaucratic government wants. Otherwise, why would China adopt a digital yuan, right? Why would they do that? Because they want the command and control top-down view. The worst thing about this is for anonymity and privacy and ultimately liberty because money is free speech. The ability to fund uh, the campaign that you want to fund, to buy what you want to buy, to send your money to who you want to send it to. This is the liberation and freedom that Bitcoin offers and that open and non-restrictive uh, monetary systems or currencies allow you, right? Um, let's compare what a digital yuan will look like. That is the same level of power that would be entrusted to the United States government. Now, can we trust the United States government more than we can trust the Chinese government? Absolutely. They're nicer to their citizens, right? They allow us more freedoms and liberties, right? Uh, but the danger here is in every transaction being recorded in a central database. Uh, it is a command and control version of the economy. It makes it increasingly harder to exercise your free speech, privatize your spending habits. This destroys a lot of financial privacy. It dissolves anonymity and cash will be outlawed as a result, which currently is the most liquid hard currency that you can get. Physical cash, you can conduct your transactions uh, and they're private and anonymous, right? And the only alternative that people will be left with is decentralized systems like Bitcoin. But let's be positive about this, right? Let's be positive about this. Again, uh, you know, Brooks has a pretty illustrious career. He's worked at Coinbase. Uh, I want to believe and hope that he does have the good intentions here, that he does want to build a good system where private corporations uh, are much more in charge of how this thing is built. Uh, and is basically the system is handed to the government. Hopefully they need a lot of IT work and the IT workers that come in are Bitcoin pros. Uh, this is typically how it works with big command and control operations. They don't know how to, you know, make the printer operate. And then the IT guy comes in and then, you know, you get office space. So let's hope for the best uh, and expect for the worst. So what we are going to be seeing in our lifetimes, we've covered this a bunch of times. Uh, cash is going to be outlawed in our lifetimes. CBDCs are going to become a reality. Uh, and, you know, we begin to look at current situations right now. I don't think this is going to happen now. Uh, it's possible that it'll be the next financial crisis that occurs. It just depends on how bad this one gets. Uh, but if this situation gets much worse, you know, uh, and people start calling, right, or people won't call for it, that's not how it's going to happen, right? But, you know, the the government response to the to this current financial crisis will be uh, the blame will be laid at the feet of our current monetary structure, right? Cash will be blamed. Um, liquidity will be blamed. You know, they'll say, well, you know, all these, you know, uh, U.S. dollar printing presses, uh, you know, we're kind of some of these were distributed around the world and we're missing all of these dollars. Uh, there's a 12 trillion dollar margin call. There's trillions of dollars, physical banknotes that are missing. They're being hoarded in vaults. Uh, and this is causing liquidity crisis around the world uh, because there is more outstanding debt than, than, than notes in circulation. And we don't know where all the notes are. So this blame will be laid at the feet of the current cash structure. Right. Uh, and if the government wants to introduce a CBDC and institute a ban on cash, uh, they would be best suited to take advantage of a situation like this. Look what was instituted on the back of 9-11, the Patriot Act, domestic surveillance, uh, and that's just cracking the surface of the iceberg, right? Uh, you know, and again, 
uh, something that 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 also is, I guess, a potential is, you know, if uh, if goods and services are distributed by the government, uh, you know, requiring that individuals register and buy goods and services with the new CBDC, basically registering for the new system. If we do something like the Yang buck or if we do something like, you know, this one thousand dollar distribution to everybody again, I, I think it's it's far too early for it to be happening right now. This thing isn't even built yet. Um, but if, if they wanted an excuse to outlaw cash and if they wanted an excuse to introduce a CBDC under the auspices of, well, listen, what we just went through, guys, was really terrible and we never want to go through that again. And the reason why we went through this is because we have a broken system and it was the uh, it was the it's the cash based system that we currently have. So we just need to get rid of that and we'll institute this new digital system. We'll never have this problem again. We'll never have a liquidity or crunch crisis again. You'll never have problems getting your money out of the bank because you'll never need to get money out of the bank. You'll just use your fingerprint, thumbprint, you know, your digital system and we'll command and control everything from our centralized office and location. And we'll, you know, we'll increase the monetary supplies we need to. We'll reduce it as we need to. It'll be, you know, it'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be great. So things to be wide eyed about uh, as we continue to move forward, because that is certainly not uh, the future that I would like to live in uh, and sets up the narrative for Bitcoin as the only alternative. So again, Bitcoin is the people's money. And regardless of where the price is, you would be well suited to hold some Bitcoin because it's going to be a valuable transactional asset moving forward if you would like to maintain a modicum of privacy with your transactions and control over what you do. And if you'd like to have non-seizable funds, right? This goes back to what I talked about with that earlier question. Somebody said, well, won't credit cards... Um, uh, I think it was Valerian said, won't credit cards, you know, ease this kind of liquidity crisis? Sure. Right. But, you know, the more we do that, the more we move into a world where, you know, your credit card account can just be turned off. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, it's a lot. It's chunky. Let me know in the comment section down below or hop in the discord. We can have a chat about this uh, later on.